Okay, so here's our lab continuation of what we were doing from 94B. Um, but um, an application problem, I thought that it would kind of deserve its own little video here. So we have feet from home plate. The baseball is hit three feet with the horizontal at a speed of 100 miles per hour. So in general, we're going to use these equations to model the path of a projectile motion. Okay? So again, these are just the ones that we are going to use. Right? Uh, that x equals v sub 0 times cosine t here, and that y equals h plus v sub 0 16 t squared. Again, v sub 0 is going to be theta will be the angle with the horizontal, h is the initial height above the ground, x is the distance in feet from home plate, and then y is the distance above the horizontal. So let's try to write a set of parametric equations for the path of the baseball. Um, so one thing that we're going to need to find is the V sub 0. That's in both of the equations. And notice that the uh, velocity is in feet per second. And so, of course, they tell us that this is in miles per hour. So we're going to want to convert this to feet per second. Let's do that. We know that the initial velocity is 100 miles per hour. So first, let's work on converting miles to feet. Um, so there are 5,280 feet in a mile. And now I want to convert hours to seconds. So there is 60 minutes in one hour. And then one minute. 60 seconds, and now I have it in feet per second, okay? So if we simplify that, I'll just use the calculator real quick for that. Um, I've got 5,280 times 100 divided by basically 3,600, and if I fraction that up, I see, or simplify just for time's sake, I see that my velocity will be 440 over 3 feet per second. Really cute number, right? Okay. So that's really the information that we needed to know here. We're going to leave theta alone because theta could be several different angles. Um, so the x equation that we're going to have is, again, 440 over 3 cosine theta. Like, that's our coefficient of t. Okay. Um... And so we want something for y as well. Um, so we know v sub zeta is going to change depending on the angle that it's hit. We need to know h. Um, and so if we look at that, we can see that um, h is the initial height above the ground. It says the baseball is hit three feet above the ground. So that's going to tell me that h is three. And so now we can use that idea that h is three. And we found that the velocity is 440 over 3 feet per second. But now we have the sine of theta as our coefficient of t, and then minus 16 squared. Okay. So then it says to use a graphing utility to sketch the path of the baseball for theta equals 15 degrees and decide if the hit is a home run. So to decide if it's a home run or not, remember that the home run, um, it has to be four, like so center field is 400 feet from home plate. So our home run, it means that it um, has to be more than 400 feet from home plate. So let's put this in the graphing calculator. And so in, um, so make sure we're in parametric mode and we can, lights are looking good. Okay, there we go. Um, so in our X, we can put 440 over three. And now we want the cosine of theta. And in this case, theta is 15. So we're gonna take the cosine of 15. And that's gonna be my coefficient of T. Okay. If that makes you uncomfortable, it kind of makes me uncomfortable, put the 440 over 3 in parentheses, whatever. Okay. Um, and so now for our y, 
we're going to take 3 plus, and again, we've got 440 over 3 times the sine of theta, which in this case is going to be 15 degrees, times t minus 16t squared. Now, again, make sure that we're in degree mode for this, since we're, theta is, uh, is 15 degrees, and I am in degree mode, so that's good. Um, and the other thing we might want to identify is our um, window. So remember, for our window here, we're going to go from, uh, we need a, a T. And again, some negatives and positives are nice. So maybe since I'm doing it in the calculator, I'll go from negative 4 to 4. Remember, a smaller T step is more accurate. So maybe I'll use 0.1 as my um, scale there. For x is how far from home plate it's going to be. So in context, it's just going to be 0. Um, and for it to be a home run, we said it had to be 400 feet. So maybe something more than that. Maybe I'll go to 450. And if I was going to 450, my scale might be something like 50. And then my y is going to be how high above the ground it is. I don't know. I'm going to go 0 to 50 feet. And I don't know, I'll go by fives. Okay. Um, so again, you can have a lot of different scales, you know, like depending on that. So um, I have that set up here um, that I'm going from negative 4 to 4 with a t-step of 1, 0 to 450 with a scale of 50, and 0 to 50 with a scale of 5. And now that I have that in the calculator, let's see if that's going to be a home run. Well, remember my scale was 50. So if I'm looking here, that's 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. Oh my gosh, it's never getting to that 400. So we can see that. We can say no. And because it never travels um, 400 feet in that scenario. And if we tried, for example, to trace, it's going to take a while because <laughs> I started at negative 4. Um, we can see that if I'm tracing over here that the x gets to 340 and then, then not so much there. Okay. Um, so now it wants us to find the path of the baseball for theta equals 23 degrees. So let's use the same thing. Let's use the same scale. But now, just in our y equals, instead of the 15, I'm just going to type 23 over that instead. And then we'll see if that makes a difference. Okay. And now let's graph this. So we can see that it is going to travel. We can trace here. And it might take a little bit of time. Um, but what we can see is that I guess my 50 wasn't big enough there. But if I'm looking at my x values, notice that it's going to go past 400, at least when I'm tracing, at about 30.9. Um, so we can say that that's going to be a home run. So we can say yes because at about 400 feet, it's still 30.9 feet high. So that's going to travel enough to be that home run. Okay. So then it says find the minimum angle required for the hit to be a home run. And so in this case, remember that that means that x has to be 400. in order for um, it to um, get to that center field, x must be 400. So that means that I have 400 equals 440 over 3 cosine theta t. And the other stipulation is that y must be 10. 
because again, it said that it was going to be 10 feet high. So it has to be 400 feet um, from home plate and also 10 feet high. So Y must be 10. So that means that 10 equals three plus 440 over three sine theta t minus 16 t squared. Well, obviously this is a case where we're gonna have to eliminate the parameter, right? So let's isolate t here. So if I do that, I need to multiply both sides by um, this reciprocal. So three over 440 and then basically I'm multiplying by one over cosine theta as well. So this ends up giving me 11. This ends up giving me three, so 30 over 11 cosine theta. So that's what my T is. So now I can substitute this 30 over 11 cosine theta in for each of these t's. So I have 10 equals 3 plus 440 over 3 sine theta. Now I have 30 over 11 cosine theta here. And then 16, 30 over 11 cosine theta here. Okay, so let's... Um, try to do some simplifying a little bit. I can, um, I'll subtract this three over. <laughs> that might help a little bit. Um, you see that I'm gonna end up with sine over cosine. So that sine over cosine is gonna give me a tangent theta. And simplifying here, that's gonna be a 10. This 11 goes into 440, 44 times. Oh no, just 40 times. Yes, sorry. So um, 11 goes into 440, 40 times. And so I have 40 times 10, which is gonna be 400. Sine over cosine would give me that tangent theta. Okay. Um, so here I could square 30 and then multiply it by 16, that gives me 1440, no, 14400, um, squaring 11, that's 121, and then I'm gonna have one over cosine theta squared. Um, so that means that that's gonna be secant squared theta. And so we have this equation, and again, what we could do is say, okay, um, these aren't the same, but there is that Pythagorean relationship that I could use that I could turn everything into tangent by saying that secant squared is going to be 1 plus tangent squared theta. Okay, um, so even before I do that, like before I distribute, are you guys okay if I multiply both sides by 121 um, just to get rid of that fraction? So 121 times 7 gives me 847. 121 times 400 will give me 48,400. And then here those cancel. And that's just going to make it a little easier for me to distribute, just to get rid of that fraction from there. Okay. All right. So now I've got um, 847 and then 48,400 tan theta distributing this, so minus 14,440, and then 14,400 tan squared theta. So if I wrote this in standard form, <laughs> um, I'm going to bring this over. So this is going to be positive 14,400 tangent squared theta 
this is going to move over and be minus 48,400 tangent of theta. And then I would need to add 14,400 to 847 to give me 15,247 equals zero. Okay. So this is a really pretty quadratic. And then, of course, how would we need to solve this? Well, by the quadratic formula, except we're not finding theta. What we're doing when we find the quadratic, when we use the quadratic formula here, is we would be finding the tangent of theta. So that's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root oops, of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. So what happens is um, when we find this, we'll get that tangent theta is going to equal, um, well, be approximately equal to 48,400. If we take this, this ends up being about 38,266.6, and this ends up being 28,800. Okay, so then if I find each of these, my tangent of theta can be about 3.01 if I add, and if I subtract, tangent of theta could be about 0.35. So what we could do is use inverse tangent to find that. Um, so I can take the inverse tangent, 3.01, and so that tells me that theta is going to be about 71.6 degrees. I could take the inverse tangent of 0.35. That means that theta could be about 19.3 degrees. But again, what they wanted is they wanted the minimum angle. So either of those could work. And so that means that we would want to choose this one. So we would say that theta is going to be about 19.3 um, degrees. Okay. Um, and again, I think if you actually use the exact values, it might be something like 19.4, but that's close enough for government work. Anyway, so this is just um, a fun way that you can find um, the minimum angle to reach a home run, because I'm sure you'd like to do that in your sleep. Anyway, so that's it for that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that example, and um, have a great day.